My name is Dwight Joseph Bella Sr. And from New Orleans, Louisiana. Started music at the age, at the grade of third grade. Went professionally playing music in 1970. And throughout those years, was playing rhythm and blues with the tenor saxophone. In 1970, I joined a jazz band and was able to uh, do jazz fest, was on the post of jazz fest. In 1973, traveled to overseas to Europe, Japan, Switzerland. Switzerland, um, let's see, Japan, Switzerland, Portugal, and from there came back to the States and was on festivals in California. It came back to New Orleans and did Jazz Fest every year, and also, um, uh, Played festivals around the city, second lines, funerals. In 1920, 2010, I had medical problems, had a light stroke, but I'm still playing music, but can't do the second lines, anything like that anymore. And still playing music of, of, of today. Well, in 1970, most of New Orleans had blues clubs in the local bars, and you go into a boy you hear it, and a guy asked me if you play music. I say I play saxophone, so he hired me in a band, and from there played with him about five years, and after that I started my own band, and that was good for ten years until I started playing for the jazz band and we uh, played the Zulu Bowl and I had been playing the Zulu Bowl for seven years, several years. Well, my uncle used to play saxophone on the cruise ships and my younger brother, I started off playing trumpet and my uncle used to play saxophone on the cruise ships and he passed away and he left money to get a saxophone for my younger brother. And he was younger than I was, so he couldn't really hold a horn up. We had to sit him on a stool with a horn stand. And I was showing him, and I liked the saxophone a lot better than the trumpet. So then I switched over to the saxophone. Pinstripe brass band. It's still active today. But right now I'm playing with the jazz men's brass band. It was income, but I always kept a job. I was working at Coca-Cola, and music was a sideline for enjoyment, but it was still a pay scale. Well, they have a lot of street musicians, guys that I play with. That's all they do is just play music. But if that's the lifestyle you want to live, you know, let it be. But I never depended on just music of taking care of my family. Well, my youngest boy, I brought him to Europe when he was like 16 or 17 years old, and he liked it. And uh, I sit him on the sofa and showed him how the music went and everything, and he had a great interest in the music. So he was at St. Augustine, he left from there and went to Xavier and he studied music and he's a professional musician also now and Bryce we played jazz fest together and also a couple of funerals together and right now maybe we'll get together for this jazz fest coming up it's a present of jazz today and older guys that was before my time, because we learned a lot of music from them.
So I think the younger guys that you see on the street playing music, they're learning the culture of New Orleans jazz, New Orleans musicians. Well, it's a great culture because it came from Louis Armstrong and also a lot of greats that left. We, uh, Fat Domino just passed away. It was thousands of people out there for his repairs. Big second line parade. So the culture gonna stay alive. Where well, the musician of my generation playing the old music now, the younger guys is changing the music because we play traditional music. The guys today is playing hip hop and foregone music. Traditional music is the music that Louis Armstrong played, Jelly Roll Martin, and all those guys. No, it ever been a big change because most of the musicians came back to New Orleans. It's the culture of New Orleans and the music, the flavor we have here. Well, Musician Village, the Bacellas family built it for musicians, but it's not all musicians there. They're selling those properties, and some of the musicians can get in there. It becomes an income if you can get in or not. Okay. What do you mean by it becomes an income? If you have an income that you can get in the musician villages houses that sale, it's not a free for musicians as okay. they planned it was going to be. Okay. I think it helped the city a lot because it was just abandoned school and they tore all that down and they built houses in there so it was good for the city. We used to do a lot of second line parades and crowds of people and it was a lot of enjoyment in it. And going on tour, it was a little different because you are there to perform in a matter not just having fun with the crowd, but just doing a good job so you can come back again. Japan was a lot different because in Japan, they appreciated the New Orleans music and we translated a lot of New Orleans music into Jap Japanese music. And uh, the people loved us there. Yeah. I don't have any connections to Congo Square. Okay. But Congo Square is, like we said, Louis Armstrong Park. It's not really known as a Congo Square anymore because the Congo Square came up when a Africans years ago the slaves used to enjoy the Sundays there, the off days there. That's why it became Congo Square. Like you say, Congo Square they didn't have instruments during that time. It was only drums and bongos and it would sing. So that made the culture of New Orleans music. And I can remember the phrase not the phrase well, the first jazz fest that I played, it was in Congo Square. Louis Armstrong produced the jazz. He was the first one to come up with a different style of jazz music. And everybody followed him. Jelly Roll Martin, Professor Longhair, uh, I think some of the other older guys, musicians, everybody went in his footsteps. Hey, lessons. He used to go to Royal Line for lessons. Royal Line on Canal Street, which is not there anymore. It was book lessons, notes, reading music. But now today, most of the musicians don't read music, play by ear. Well, it's a good thing. Because when you're in the street, you can't, it's like, you're not like in a marching band where you have music in front of you, you know? So it's a good thing you sit at home, you practice, read the music, and when you get on the street, there's no music in front of you. I would give it maybe four or five years I was going to Royal Line for music. I would say from maybe eight years old to 15. No, I came professionally in, in 1970. And from then on, 
of today. So we're looking at 47 years, something like that. Yeah. Just being a musician is it's a lot of fun. Get to meet people. And your music bring you places. Can you move it back, son? Can you see it? Now yeah, I'm gonna move back, son. Hmm? You can stay right there. This is my camera. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Got it? Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it? Now the one with the, uh, in the jazz. The jazz press post, I don't know if it's in the back room. But, but, uh, in the jacuzzi room. So I don't know if you can get back there or not. You can try to get back there if you want. Sit right there. See you good? Yeah. You can come in or come walk in the hallway. Something that looks at the problem in there is not there. That is always the thing. Watch it all fall, Milan. 
You come here. You ain't taking all that junk, huh? <laughs> Is it here? Yeah. See on the wall to the right. This one? Yeah. So you was able to catch this one? Make it on. I hope that do it might get some more light. Do it give it more light? Mm-hmm. Can you point to where you are? Huh? Can you point to where you are in the picture? Oh, right here. And when was that? That was uh, Monday ground in 19... No, 2002, I think. Monday ground Zulu. Well, I have another picture from the time Picayune. I don't know if I can get to it or not. Your grandma got so much junk up in her room. Bryce, don't touch that. You can cut your finger off. Yeah, your grandma got so much junk in that room. I don't know if I can get to that one. Okay. You want to see, Joy? No, she's not. Well, she's getting Bryce head with that phone. You aren't the most original kid. That's not oh, why they said they can only do hydrating with that color. Well, even specifically with Miss Asiatic Lilies. This is the old Asiatic Lilies. 